Uh, a and B be positive integers. The cells of an A plus B plus one by A plus B plus one grid are colored amber and bronze, such that there are at least A squared plus AB minus B amber cells and at least B squared plus AB minus A bronze cells. Proof that it is possible to choose A amber cells and B bronze cells such that no two of the A plus B chosen cells lie in the same row or column. Okay, so um, first of all, I've drawn out a six by six grid of squares over here to our left, just for us to be able to visualize things as we go, uh, because we are gonna do some manipulating with the squares on the grid. I haven't labeled them amber or bronze because that's not important at this stage. Um, so let's look at our problem statement. We have positive integers A and B, and we have this A plus B plus one grid of cells, and each cell is colored amber or bronze, such that there are at least this many amber cells and this many bronze cells. And at first glance, this number isn't such, this isn't such a useful expression because, you know, um, A squared plus A B minus B, well, that's not easily factorable, and it's hard for us to imagine what we could ever possibly do with that. But as we'll see in a moment, it turns out that this expression A squared plus A B minus B is incredibly useful. And um, the way we're gonna derive anything from A squared plus A B plus one, a, a, B minus B, excuse me, is by saying, okay, well, we don't know anything about A and B, but we know that the grid is A plus B plus one by A plus B plus one. And then we look over here and we see A squared plus A, B, and we're like, huh, maybe it's possible for us to be able to factor A plus B plus one from this, because what you see is you have A squared is equal to A times A plus A times B. And what happens is if we add A and subtract A, we end up with this thing, which is equal to A times, we're going to factor out an A for each of these three, A plus B plus one, minus A minus B. And we can actually go a step farther because, well, negative a plus b um, looks an awful lot like a plus b plus 1. So we subtract 1 and then add 1 again. And this is equal to a times a plus b plus 1 minus a plus b plus 1 plus 1, which is equal to a minus 1 times a plus b plus 1 plus 1. So this is this is the way we're going look to at, look at this expression, a squared plus a b minus b is equal to a minus 1 times a plus b plus 1 times 1. So I'm going to write it up here. a squared plus a b plus no, minus b is equal to a minus one times a plus b plus one plus one. Um, and similarly, um, you, you have the number of bronze cells you must have is at least b squared plus a b minus a. And using the exact same factorization trick, you get this is equal to b minus one times a plus b plus one plus one. So um, that looks a little bit nicer. We've related to the side length of the grid, which will come in very useful because of what we're going to do next. Okay, so we wish to prove that it is possible to choose A amber cells and B bronze cells such that no two of those chosen cells lie in the same row or column. But I'm going to go a little bit farther than that. Instead of choosing A plus B cells such that A of them are amber and B of them are bronze, what I'm just going to do is I'm going to choose A plus B plus one cells such that no two of the cells lie in the same row or column. And I don't care what color those cells are. I'm just going to I'm just going to choose A plus B plus one cells. And the way I'm going to do it is I'm going to do it like this. I'm just going to draw the diagonal. I'm going to label each diagonal square with a one because and as we'll see, we're gonna, all these ones are gonna be in the, we're gonna consider them in the same set of squares, or I'm gonna call them bands in this video. Um, a band um, I'm gonna define as a set of squares, A plus B plus one squares, or in this case, six squares, such that no two of them are in the same row or column. And I'm actually gonna split this grid up into different bands. I'm gonna label each of these six squares, one, two, three, four, five, six, with a two, to signal that they're in band to two. Um, and you can see, once again, that none of them are in the same row or column as other ones in the same band. And then I'm gonna label these six squares with a three. And then I'm gonna label these six squares with a four. And I'm going to label these six squares with a five, and I'm going to label these six squares with a six. So now I have six bands of each one has six squares, or more generally, you're going to have A plus B plus one bands with A plus B plus one squares per band. And so the claim is going to be, um, I'm, I'm actually going to call this lemma one because this is going to be so important, lemma one. Um, there exists, there exists a band with at least A amber squares at least A amber cells. And the proof is gonna be, okay, there are A plus B plus one bands. So let's just assume for contradiction that every band has less than A amber cells, which means the most any band could ever have is A minus one amber cells. So, the, so then let's, let's just assume, okay, the maximum possible amber squares there could ever be in the cell is, well, if each band has the maximum number of amber cells that it could have, which is A minus one, we're assuming that no bands have at least A amber cells. So every band has at most A minus one amber cells. So the most amber cells that could be, be present in the grid total is the number of amber cells per grid per, per band, number of amber cells per band times the number of band, A plus B plus one, which you'll notice is less than A squared plus AB minus B by one, because A squared plus AB minus B is equal to A minus one times A plus B plus one. So this is the maximum number of amber squares you could ever have in the grid. But you see that that is a contradiction because we are already given by assumption that there are at least this many amber cells in the grid, which means that our assumption was false. So there does exist a band with at least A amber cells. And using a similar logic, you can prove lemma two, um, doing the exact same thing with B, where there you can say there exists a band with at least B bronze cells. With this exact same way you prove lemma one. Okay, now that we've asserted those two things, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay, 
let's say I have a band and the bands have, have size a plus b plus one. So if I have a band with a amber cells and b plus one bronze cells, because the sum must add up to um, a plus b plus one, or um, if I have a plus one amber or and b bronze, then I am done. And the reason is because let's say I have a band of A amber cells and B plus one bronze cells. What if I um, consider um, the A amber cells and all but one of the bronze cells, that's A amber cells and B bronze cells. And because they're in a band, no two of the cells lie in the same row or column. And similarly, if you have A plus one amber cells and B bronze cells, you can consider all the bronze cells and all but one of the amber cells and no two of them will lie in the same row or column. So if we have one of these, then we are done. Um, and we solve the problem, okay? So now I am going to prove that there must exist a band such that it has A amber cells and B plus one bronze cells, or it has A plus one amber cells and B bronze cells. In other words, my claim is going to be that um, there exists a band with either A or A plus one amber cells. And here's how I'm going to prove it. Okay. Level one states that there exists a band with at least A amber cells. Okay. We are just going to Without other generality, we're going to assume that we're going to assume that it's band one because it doesn't really matter. Um, just for visualization, assume that band one includes at least a amber cells. I'm actually going to highlight band one with this red um, highlighter just to demonstrate this to depict this. Um, without also generality, let that let the band with at least a cells be band one. At least a cells be band one. Okay. And now what we're going to do is we're going to say, assume for contradiction that this claim isn't true. In other words, every band either has A minus one or less cells, or it has A plus two or more cells. Okay. So we already know that band one has um, at least A cells, but by our contradiction statement, which I'm actually going to write here, assume for the sake of contradiction that all bands do not have A or A plus one amber cells. And I'm actually going to have this word exactly here. Assume for the sake of contradiction that all bands do not have exactly A or A plus one A cells. Then every band must have A minus one or fewer or A plus two or greater. Uh, however, band one has at least A cells, but it can't have A cells or A plus one cells. Um, so it must have at least A plus two cells just by this assumption. Okay. So band one has at least A plus two cells, which means it has at most B plus one, B minus one bronze cells. Okay. Then um, let's say without loss of generality, band the band with at least B bronze cells. Um, by lemma two, there exists a band with at least B bronze cells. Uh, there's this band with at least B bronze cells. Um, without lots of generality, let's let that band be band two. Once again, it really doesn't matter which band we choose. I'm going to call it, I'm going to highlight band two with green. And because it has at least B bronze cells, but it cannot have exactly B or B plus one bronze cells. Otherwise, this claim would be true and the assumption would be false. So the band must have at least B plus two bronze cells, um, which means it has at most A minus one amber cells. So uh, in short, band one has at least a plus two, at least a plus two amber cells, um, at least a plus two amber cells. So band one has at least a plus two amber cells, and band two has at least at most a minus one amber cells. Uh, so this band is band two. B band two. Band two has at most a minus one amber cells. Then what I'm going to do is I am going to say, okay, let's 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 actually turn band one into band two. And the way I do this is I say, okay, I am going to take two. Um, Two cells from band one, and I am going to swap them around. So, for example, um, let's say I took this cell and this cell, and I'm going to swap them, and I'm going to swap them in a very specific way, such that um, um, you remove these two from band one, and you essentially you add these two. So now band one consists of these two purple ones and um, these four red ones, and this is still a band because um, all of six of its squares, or all a plus b plus one of its squares in the more general case, all of its squares are not in the same row or column. So, effectively, this is still a band. Um, but how, but you ask how are how does this even relate to band two? And what I'm going to say is it will always be possible to change two squares from band one into um, two other squares, like I just showed, such that one of those two other squares is in band two. And the way, the reason is because take a look at a square in band two, any square, like say this one, and you look at its row and its column, and exactly one square from band one is in its row, and a different square from band one is in its column. And the reason is because we define band one so that every square was in a different row and column. So long story short. Um, you take this square and these two in band one are um, in the same row and same row as band same row as the square and the same column as the square. And then we swap these two so that one of them ends up um, on band two. So now, um, um, so now our band one consists of these six red highlighted squares and one of them overlaps with band two. Um, 
And then what we do is we sort of ignore this, this, this row and column, and you take the other five squares in band one and the other five squares in band two, and you apply the exact same process over and over again. And each time you get one new square that is in both band one and band two, until eventually all squares in band one are also in band two. Um, and I claim that at some point we will get a band because every 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 step we get a new band because all, all the squares are still in different rows and columns. I claim that at, at some point during this process we will get a band in that satisfies this claim. There exists um, exactly a or a plus one amber cells, and the reason is because look, band one has um, has at least a plus two amber cells, and band two has at most a minus one amber cells. Now think about it. Every time you make a move, how many cells change? Well, two cells change in band in band one. Like for example, if you're moving this one and this one to that one and that one, the number of amber cells will change by, by at most two. It might not change at all, but because you're changing, but because you're swapping two squares, um, the maximum number of amber cells um, that become bronze cells or the maximum number of bronze cells that become amber cells is two. Which means if you think about the number of amber cells, um, every move is only going to change by at most two. And because you're starting with at least a plus two amber cells, and you keep moving, and at some point you're going to end up with at most a minus one amber cells. But since for every move you only uh, change by two, it means that in order to get from up here with a plus two to down here with a minus one, you must you must hit the number a or a plus one at least once. And the reason is because if you have a plus two cells, um, and eventually um, you're, you're going to decrease by some number, but you're going to do it in steps. And um, so if the number of amber cells decreases after a move, it's going to go to either a plus one or a. It can't go from a plus two directly to a minus one because they have a difference of three and the number cannot change by three or more. And therefore, at some point during this process, we will end up with a band that has exactly a or a plus one amber cells. And we can take that band and we can take a of the amber cells and b of the bronze cells. And we are effectively done. Um, so that proves the problem statement. Thanks for watching and I will see you next time.